my name is Ricardo. I'm from uh, Chromia. And uh, what we do, we do a public blockchain. Um, essentially, uh, yeah, so I think there is a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, essentially what we do is a public blockchain, uh, which is what you heard around, but we have a different layer uh, in the data structure, so we use SQL. This is uh, very handy because uh, it allows to uh, get the concept of blockchain very easily, and it also allows to have very fast computation and very fast development, because developers see something that is actually uh, quite, uh, um, uh, quite uh, uh, common. Is, is it working by chance? Because there was a video, actually. Yeah, no worries. But yeah, essentially what I would like to talk today about is that we are uh, introducing our NFT in our blockchains, uh, which has some, uh, we believe, better um, meta characteristics such as composability, extensibility, and it's possible to share a specific NFT across different chains. Um, Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, but it's not really working. Yeah. All right, so essentially uh, we made this uh, demo application where it's possible to get new uh, uh, NFT and, uh, uh, and compose a character with different uh, items, which is essentially what you see around, but we also give the possibility to change this asset and to decompose it. So we have composability and decomposability very easily. Um, the reason we did that is because we are actually targeting game blockchain. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. So game, blockchain, uh, game developers uh, usually have this problem of very high cost when they launch an application. Um, players have other problems when they play games, such as they don't own the assets, and that's something they want. Like, if I'm paying for, a, for an asset in a game, if I'm paying for a skin, I want to be sure that actually I can use it any time in the future. But this is actually not, not the status quo of today. And uh, publishers, because of that, don't maximize the revenues they can make, because um, people are kind of titubant. If, if uh, for example, there is... Uh, a game that is soon to be replaced with a new version, people might stop buying assets and keep the money for the new game. So the publishers do not maximize the revenues that they can make. On the other side, the blockchain is starting, is trying to enter in this market to develop games on the blockchain. Why so? Well, there are many benefits. For example, it's fair. Blockchain is fair. There is a um, written set of rules and uh, People just create, uh, make transactions, and based on the input, uh, a specific output is generated. So it's deterministic and fair. Also, it provides liquidity. This means that no matter where I am in the world, as, as, a, as, long, as, I hint, I, as long as I have internet, I can um, buy and sell cryptocurrency, uh, with crypto, cryptocurrency, buy assets, uh, uh, powers, uh, or anything in the game. Lastly, it's possible to have secure payments. As of, to, as of today, if I want to buy a specific skin, um, the way to do it is by sending money to somebody on PayPal and hoping that this person actually will give me the assets. On the blockchain, you can have a smart contract that does it automatically, so nobody can uh, rip you off. All of this sounds very good on paper, but for developers, the work is very hard. So, Creating NFT, dealing with NFTs today, it's very complex and is literally a nightmare for developers. Uh, I was an Ethereum developer myself and it was just difficult because at some point you have tokens that generate other tokens that get back some tokens, burn tokens, make tokens, uh, and it just becomes complex. So that's uh, actually one of our goals at Chromia. At Chromia we want to make an easy uh, environment where developers can develop without actually even knowing the complexity of the blockchain. Once they know the, the, no, the, the, no, the notion of it, they know how it works, they don't really have to deal with the complexity. This is more or less what happened uh, after the 
first programming languages. So for example, my, now Java does not require you to handle the memory of the computer. So why are we in the blockchain still waiting, still here trying to understand how fee works and so forth? So what we are trying to make is making in-game data into intra-game assets. This means that it's not only about NFTs. It's not something like one token that does something and if you extrapolate it from the context, it's something unclear and blurred. Um, what we want to do is to create a sort of package that can be composed by different uh, uh, NFTs, by different entities, such as uh, the account, uh, the virtual goods you have, particular power, achievements, and payments you have, and this is transferable itself, only part of it. It's really up to the developer and up to the uh, game that decides what to sell and what not. So this sounds like a very, very good idea. So let's say that all of these exist. We have graphical data that are on the blockchain. They are decentralized. So no matter what, you can access these images. You have game logic on chain. So you are sure that what happened will stay forever there and nobody can revert it. And you have computation. So the part that is essential for making the game work is decentralized and nobody can stop this. But the reality is different. The reality says that there is IPFS that uh, gets the, the skin maybe, uh, and then you have the Infura that you have to connect and it's not really um, the best centralization solution, and the computation is completely off chain. So essentially, you are bound to, uh, uh, to the game, uh, to the studio that developed the game, because if this, play, if this studio closed the servers, nobody can play it anymore, and your assets just is meaningless. It's just an amount of hash. So this is the problem. Most of the NFTs are actually contingent to the existence of the issue. This means that the graphic are, are off-chain. Of course, you have a hash that represents the asset that you have, but if I don't distribute you, if I don't distribute as a game studio the asset that uh, uh, you want to use in the game, you cannot do much. Like, how it works today, there is like this asset, and if you hash it and you check it against the blockchain, if this is uh, the same uh, hash, then you know that this asset is real, is the one you bought, and so forth. But if uh, the, the studio does not provide you with this skin, you cannot really play. More, important, more importantly, usually, the player account itself is completely off-chain. It's completely held by the central server. So is the game logic, uh, like, like always has been, and uh, any operation that you make is subject to the studio approval. Like, we, we saw like, what happened with Blizzard and Hong Kong in the, few, in the last days. Well, as of today, we cannot solve this problem, not even with the blockchain, because let's say that we have this kind of solution, the asset is still distributed by Blizzard. So although you can, have, you can claim the property on a particular asset on the blockchain, still, people can, the, the studio can just simply not deliver this asset to your game. So they can still stop it. And that's because it's not fully decentralized. What does it mean? Well, it means that the player de depends completely on the game studio. And if the game studio is plugged, this means that the game logic is mutable. So uh, I, make a, I can make an example. There is this game I like, and it's about cars. It's about car racing. So I just made my car to have very good condition on the web. And after one update, the, the, the physics on the, on the rain completely changed. So all the money I put in having a better car were actually pointless because everybody now had a better car than me because they just invested differently. And they didn't do it on purpose. I spent money on it and then I end up losing. Um, this also means that the publisher can play or stop the game as they wish, just by unplugging the server or by not delivering uh, assets. And uh, moreover, there is uh, uh, this problem about uh, new assets that can decrease the value of old assets. That's, what, that's something that happened. And uh, it's um, particularly due to uh, getting, trying to get more liquidity by the provider. So, as said, if the game studio just decides to unplug the server, all that rest is hashes, and these hashes means nothing. 
And this is what we are trying to change as Chromium. So what we really are trying to do is to avoid that the issue just because fails, because maybe it gets all the money that you give for game A, they invest into making game B, they fail, and then you cannot even play game A anymore, it just goes ghosted, no matter if you own the asset on any blockchain or in all the blockchain altogether. So yeah, we as Chromium, we're trying to solve this problem. First of all, we have a blockchain that we believe it's particularly uh, nice to game developers because it uses SQL, and, and uh, we actually have a better, uh, our own language called RHEL, but it sum up in having relational logic, which is something that blockchain don't have, and I really don't, I still don't figure out, figure out the reason why they don't, because it's, uh, I mean, I don't know how many of you knows SQL here. Like, I, I they, they touched to me in high school, so I think it's, everybody knows it. Um, the game logic is totally on-chain. We have a different me uh, method for uh, getting, uh, for paying notes. I, you, I will see it, uh, we will see it in a couple of slides. And we have, we have relational data structures. We have interoperability between games. This means that, for example, if you play uh, some Baker game where you have to make bread and stuff like that, uh, you can buy fluor for Farmville game. So we create a, an economy between different games and different chains. And to do that, of course, we need to, su to support the side chains. So the vision we have is that indie developers, small studios can just make a game with, with crowdfunding, where we are talking or whatever, and they just put it on the chain. All the game lives on the chain and doesn't need anything else. With that, people can vote on improving it or, the, or changing something, creating new NFT, and so forth. This means that the community is driving the development, and by doing so, it means that the studio does not need a, a, does not need a lot of money because it's subsidized by the people that wants to play that game even before uh, uh, start developing it or with a very small MVP. Um, so yeah, if I'm a game studio, how do I make money? Well. As of today, it's very difficult to get users on normal blockchains because you require, um, you require people to be blockchain uh, aware, so they need to have a wallet, they need to make transactions, they need to understand what is a fee, and I'm pretty sure that we all agree that go to the random person and say, hey, do you want to play this game? Yeah, every button you press is 15 cents. It's not really something that they will lure them into trying it out. So we have a, a different economy, which is based on having, a, uh, on, on renting a node and an amount of transactions. Uh, this means that the nodes knows that it will make a certain amount of money, and so it can be like more quiet. It knows that it will get this money within a month, for example, and can get a better deal by having certainty of uh, earning a such amount. And, uh, and so the, the game can schedule a certain amount of transactions. Then it can ask money to the user in different ways. It can have classic ways, so paying for a fee uh, per each transaction. It can have subscription models, so if you want to play, you pay 10 bucks a month, and then you can, make, you can play as much as you want. Freemium models, so you can play, and after a while you have to pay. Um, subsidize, so let's say that now I'm a big studio and I just want to, people to try it out. I can just pay for my pocket. And um, we can have in-game assets that can be sold sort of uh, uh, in a purchase model. Um, this is just about giving more choices. It's not like there's a, bet a better solution, but in this situation, game developers can do the business plan they want, they can do the business model they want, and this is what happened until now. I mean, when we start playing video games, you had to buy you to go to GameStop and buy it, and now it's way different. So why do we want to impose our view to industries that know how to make money already. So, as said, Chromia is actually focused on developers. Uh, we try to make better tool for developers. It's actually that what I do personally. And uh, we do that uh, having SQL integration, and um, which provides low infrastructure uh, requirements and very few, very low fees because SQL is one of the 
uh, arguably is, uh, for, is for sure the most used one and arguably one of the fastest uh, data multipurpose databases. And uh, we created on top a language called RHEL, which stands for Relational uh, Language, which uh, I like to define it as SQL written in the uh, 21st century. It's very easy to, to pick up, mainly if people are already proficient in uh, SQL, and it's seven times more compact than SQL. This is because SQL is actually very long, it's very uh, verbose. We, uh, by having very complex, uh, by allowing a complex logic, coding complex logic, it means that you can have any form of derivative, uh, finance, uh, future finance, and whatever you want uh, on, uh, on chain. It's actually quite easy to, to develop them. Like, we are actually now researching on token bonding curve and really doesn't require more than an afternoon to, to implement everything. And of course, we implement all the tools for the developers to develop. So we have a light, um, thin wallet, we have a light clients like replica nodes, uh, read-only nodes, and uh, we have ID that are integrated to just uh, run nodes with one button, and so forth. So it's really trying it out, it requires no more than five minutes. So, okay, likely I put these backup slides, and it's about how it works. So, um, we made this app last week, and uh, it used a, a single sign-on. We have a single sign-on solution completely on the blockchain. This means that you don't share any password, any private key, but it still works, and it works with all the app without one app being able to take money from another app, like, you, like it happens with Dapper or Metamask. So, we have different type of assets, and uh, you can compose like the planet, which is one type of asset with new one. Uh, we, make, we put a bit of gamification by sending this planet uh, to exploration. When it comes back, you get a new asset. And then you can just wear it. Then this is, the cool thing about this is that once you have this, uh, uh, this planet with the eyes you want, with the accessories you want, and so forth, you can use it across different games, across different uh, um, chains. So for example, this became the avatar of our, um, uh, of our payment solution and can be used in other games that we're going to release in the next month and so forth. So this really creates um, a connectivity, a sort of connection between games, and uh, it also allows designers to monetize on their talent. So, there can be a designer that is good at making uh, uh, um, some characters and can sell it on the game. Interesting thing is that we develop in a way that if, for example, one game requires uh, to know the uh, height of one character and to have a certain um, power and so forth, all this information can be transferred and information can be added in case your uh, avatar goes into another game. So it starts from level basic and then it can top up to the best. So really, you can use your avatar uh, in all, uh, across different chains uh, without even noticing and with very, uh, very little, little effort for the developer to adapt. So yeah, this is uh, essentially how we are trying to solve uh, uh, the um, NFT problems that I showed. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that this is completely decentralized. So once you have the front end, which is like an app on your phone, uh, all you have to do, is you connect directly to the nodes, and there is nothing else. There is no server in between. There is uh, uh, no company that can control it. The graphical asset itself is online, uh, and is in, is in the blockchain, sorry. And this means that now it cannot be stopped. I cannot even stop it myself. Yeah, that's it. If you have any questions. Um, uh, the question is, how do we, who, who is running the node uh, in this situation? Well, we have a, um, a different model from, from what you see around, and it actually is based on uh, different chains that anchor each other. So what happened, we have like a proof of stake, so if you want to develop a game, you set a level of security which is given by the number of nodes you want in your application, and, um, and then the market decides a price for it. Uh, these notes will put some money on the stake and will ask you to pay a certain amount every month for the computation uh, cost that you want. Of course, the price uh, of the notes is given by how many transactions per second you want, how many notes you want, and how much stake do you require. So if you 
or making some financial application where you will require very high staking. If you're making a small game uh, for fun, you will require a small stake. So with that, we create the network and we run a Byzantine fault tolerant uh, consensus. So we require two cell plus one confirmation from this set of nodes. And uh, the generated block is anchored on Chromium mainchain, which periodically anchor into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Anchoring means that you uh, take uh, a snapshot and hash the snapshot of the, of the chain uh, so that you can prove that the status of the chain at a given time is what is written. This means that once you put it on Bitcoin and Ethereum, people also have to corrupt Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, in order to corrupt my system because I'm uh, essentially anchoring to the security of those chain. Any other questions? Good, so yeah, I guess this was the, the presentation you were waiting, mainly because it's the last one. Uh, so yeah, I will call the day off. <laughs>